Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. Today, we're heating up your holiday weekend early. Wendy's breaking down all of the hottest topics. And summertime means big summer movies. Ben Lyons is here with a preview of all the must-see hits of the season. Plus, celebrity chef George Duran brings smoking hot barbecue ideas perfect for any party. Now, here's Wendy! It's time for Hot Topics. you haven't noticed, we are amongst royalty. It's, uh, it's Shirley from New Jersey. <laughs> Today, my mother is celebrating her 80th birthday, so we've made her queen for the day. She's got a lot to celebrate. Three reasonable children, a man who's stuck by her side, regardless of how slick her mouth gets. Thank you, Daddy. And mommy, mommy, you seriously look beautiful. Can, oh, she's waving. Oh, God. Thank you. Don't ever wonder where I get my over the topness from. <laughs> um, and, uh, and Suzanne and I are wearing, once again, special outfits from my collection at HSN. Yeah! Suzanne. Yeah! Suzanne's blouse complements her like city landscape pants. Yes, and I love them. They gather at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then for me, listen, everything isn't for everybody, but I am embracing my inner pud bangy, bendy, Bundy. <laughs> yeah! Right? Yeah! Yeah! It's, a, it's, it's two piece. It comes in sizes small X to 3X. It feels like a silky rayon -y thing. It bellows in the wind. You can wear it with heels or you can wear it with flats. It's called Mixed Media and I will be presenting the, uh, my new collection, That, This and More, uh, live on HSN Saturday, May 30th, twice that day. Um, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and again from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you very much. So did you see Rumor Win Dancing with the Stars last night? Um, I knew from the first episode of this new season that that girl was gonna win. I think the first night that she ever danced, she got a perfect score. I said, no, that's it. She's gonna win. Um, the family is very, very excited. Her sisters were over the top with it. When they dropped the confetti, Demi, her mother, <laughs> was like, yes! <laughs> Catching it. Um, her father, Bruce Willis, cried. And I just think that this is terrific. She won, not because she's a Willis and because she had A-listers voting for her. She won because she deserved to win. Yeah. And, and congratulations to her partner too. Val is Max's brother and Val had never won the mirror ball before. So this is great for him as well. Now, the thing about winning Dancing with the Stars is that it can propel you to do the next big thing in your career, of which, to our knowledge, she had no career before. I mean, I knew her because I read the, the math. No, not laughing. Okay, what was she doing? <laughs> like I always say, it's only a one hour show. I've got to get to my point. I can't dance around the bushes. Look, I don't know what the little girl, what the young lady, excuse me, did for a living, so therefore I'm gonna say she didn't have a career. I know she was an aspiring actress, but I never saw her act in anything. Now, by all this attention she's gotten from Dancing with the Stars, this could really be huge for her. And you know, um, to my knowledge, she's the first one in her family to win a major award, which is why the parents were so happy. 
look, Bruce and Demi, Bruce and Demi are big at the, um, at the box offices, but can you believe that they've never been nominated or won an Oscar? Both of them, I know. Just goes to show you, awards don't mean everything, you know? But in the case of Rumor, this could be a big deal because now that she has all of our attention, but she only has about 15 minutes to harness it and make it into something good. You know, Rumor, like it worked for Mario Lopez. Mario Lopez was not on Extra. Before Dancing with the Stars, we knew him as Slater from Saved by the Bell. And that's it. But, but by, by being on Dancing with the Stars and being so magnanimous, he ended up getting that job offer for Extra. Now we know he's there every day. Plus he writes children's books. He's, you know, Mario is, um, he's a media um, entertainer, not just Extra, so it worked for him. It didn't work, unfortunately, for, for my season, Ralph Macchio, Karate Kid. If you remember watching during season 12 when, uh, when I was on, Ralph Macchio was, um, you know, that Karate Kid thing, wipe on, wipe off, that, that, was, a big, that was a big deal. And, and he was a good dancer and he was really charming. And I really did think somehow that that was going to resuscitate a career that had gone by the wayside for a moment, but it didn't work. So rumor, there are two great examples, either make it work for you, like Mario, or not. Um, another person who made it work for him is um, Alphonse Ribeiro. I'm gonna tell you what. Tom Bergeron revealed last night um, on Dancing with the Stars his replacement for America's Funniest Home Videos and it's Alphonse Ribeiro. Uh, America loved Alphonse on Dancing with the Stars. He did the Carlton dance. Plus, he's one of those people, he's corny enough to be funny, <laughs> but cool enough that you don't disrespect his corny. Do you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and also, uh, he's per there, was, there were only like three people on the staff who said that he wasn't good for this. And believe me, you, by the time I finished arguing with them, they now believe that Afonso is perfect for this. <laughs> but here's my thing, you know, you can't be, you have to be like right down the middle. You're not the star of America's Funniest Home Videos. You're just ushering in those funny videos. And then somebody said, well, I can't believe this show is still on because you can see those funny videos on YouTube and whatnot. And I said, no, 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 no. But if you have children, young, Kevin's not in that age group anymore, but certainly Suzanne's, Jack and Pete are. They love it, every it, Sunday night, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, it. it's wholesome TV. Mm -hmm. You watch it together, you can watch it with your grandmother, you can watch it with your little kids, and it's just, and you, you need a host that is clean down the middle. And that would be Alphonse Ribeiro, who by the way, much like being the president of the United States, I feel um, still must be married and must have children. Do you know what I, like the host of America's Funniest Home Video cannot be single and, and, and also overly hot. Nice looking, but not overly hot, right? And they gotta have kids. So in conclusion, congratulations, Carlton. <laughs> I can't believe they have an upstep for you, mommy. <laughs> like you're that short that they have to, they have an upstep and they glitterized it. My mom, my mom is only like five feet two. And so, yeah, I know, oh. But she would know how to reach up and get me when she needed to. <laughs> anyway, okay, so now we know the alleged real reason that Janet Jackson is returning to music. Well, first, remember I was telling you, you know, well, remember the story, she retired from music and America, and she moved to the Middle East with her hot billionaire husband, Wasim Almana. Don't you find him attractive? Yes. <laughs> they zoomed on on a lady who was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Well, now there are reports that Janet is going back to work, and we were talking about this yesterday, that she's, or the day before, 
She's going back to work. She wants to put out music. She wants the tour. Remember, and I played that tape of her saying, I'll be back. <laughs> well, now there's more to the story. Ooh. Appar allegedly, <laughs> her marriage is falling apart. Can we talk? Yes. Honestly? Yes. She shouldn't have married him to, to begin with. I'm gonna tell you why, I'm gonna tell you why, okay? It's not because she's 49 and he's 39. Oh. And it's not because he lives in the Middle East and she's from Encino. <laughs> it's because Janet, to, first of all, when you're a billionaire, and we don't, many of us don't know anything about that life. <laughs> But we read a lot. Don't you know that when you're a billionaire that the first commitment to your mom and dad is to sire an heir to take over the business? Yeah. Now, times have changed a lot where the heir does not necessarily have to be a man. The same way they have that little Prince George over there, but now Charlotte comes along, Charlotte could also be king. You know, they, the, even, oh, the, even the royals have bent. But he, he doesn't have any children. And his first obligation, when you're a billionaire, isn't your first obligation yeah. to sire at least one? Yeah. To me, Janet is a second wife, not a first wife. Oh. Because once you get a second wife, you've already had your kids yeah. and some spares. Yeah. I, uh, and, and at 49 years old, and I know that there are women who have kids at 49. I know a guy I love on the radio, Curtis Sliwa, here in New York. Curtis's sister gave birth at 56 to twins, okay? I don't know about you, but my cutoff date for kids in my mind used to be 40. However, now the times in which we live, there's so many women still having kids at 42 and 43 that now I got, even I got a new cutoff date, it's 43. It's, it's 43. You know, but. 49, 50, 51, those eggs have been scrambled. <laughs> oh, um, mommy, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, I do. 40, 49 is a very dangerous time to try to have kids. I think it is. And if, if you and daddy were billionaires, the first thing that you would want from me, Tommy, or Wanda is to sire an heir before we go off to somebody who maybe can't have kids. Absolutely. Say, that, that's all, I'm, and, and we're just plain old people from Jersey. <laughs> and they're judging, so you can imagine what his parents are saying. Janet's also, she, she probably misses the spotlight. She's been a star since she was seven years old. And even though a lot of stars, they run from the paparazzi and they like their privacy when they're here living in LA, once you move to the Middle East and nobody's chasing you around and, and people are kind of forgetting about you and all of a sudden Beyonce and Rihanna and these girls are closing in the ranks. Heck, you even see legends like Madonna still fighting the good fight, you know? <laughs> um, Janet probably wants back in on the game. So we'll be watching her career, we'll be watching the marriage, and we do this all for you. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, inmates. How you doing? <laughs> it's time for a Teresa update. Hit it. All right, the woman that Joe was spotted dining out with has broken her silence. Ooh. Yeah, that's the woman with the half corn rose. You know, she works at a, <laughs> I, we, were talking, we were talking the other wet day, she works at a strip club. And they were enjoying a seafood meal in the Ironbound section of North New Jersey. <laughs> And the, the place stayed open and so did they until one o'clock in the morning. And this was a nosy diner who, um, who does not work for Hot Topics, but her nosiness worked in our favor because now we have the picture. <laughs> She's over there taking the pictures. Okay, so the woman um, that right here with Joe has denied that they're having an affair. She claims that they're just... My people. 
<laughs> that they're just friends. Um, but when she was asked about why Joe was so touchy feeling, you know what she said? What? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, first of all, she's just, gotten, she's just gotten started in this whole, you know, in touch life and style hot topics game. In the very beginning, people always say the wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? But listen, young lady, you never say, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> You're supposed to say he wasn't touchy feely. He was leaning into conversation because the man across the table was saying something interesting. I mean, you, you're, supposed to, you're supposed to have your excuses ready. Um, and I know that she's saying this, but she's also 27 years old. And, and this is, yes, it's, uh, well, it's, it's, <laughs> Suzanne said it's rough. <laughs> no, it's, no, it's not, but I will say this. Um, I'm gonna give her the benefit of the doubt because that's what she said. But can I talk to you without saying anything? Listen, a 27-year-old girl with a regular life, you know, and, you know, loves a little bit of excitement, especially these days. And it's exciting for some 27-year-olds who work at a strip club to all of a sudden see a reality star come into that club and they exchange numbers and you know you're safe from getting your behind beat on the turnpike because his wife is in jail. <laughs> And, and he's, he's saying to you, come have dinner. At 27, 50% of you judging this girl would be right there. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, yeah, oh. Yeah. Um, sidebar, doesn't she look a little bit like Chloe? Yeah, Just, yeah a, a little like Chloe. Oh. Clo a, 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 oh. <laughs> Chloe, where were you last Wednesday? <laughs> no, I'm playing. Look, I think that um, Teresa's daughters talk about this. I think that they're all on the internet. I hopefully Teresa is not talking to her daughters about any of the mess that Joe is alleged to be doing out here because the daughters just get work. You know, daughters look to their moms for strength. And even when, as a woman and as a young girl, you look to your mom for particular strength. And when you see your mom crying, yelling at your father or, or getting yelled at by your father or worried in any way, as a, as a young girl, you know, you get concerned. So hopefully Teresa exemplifies nothing but strength when she talks to her daughters. But I, what I do think that Teresa um, should do, because she's not getting internet, so her internet is hot topics. <laughs> but you know what though, Teresa? I'm sure you're paying your lawyer enough money. You should have your lawyer review with you the, the hottest stories about you, like how you're doing out here in these streets every time you talk to your lawyer because you need to know how to handle Joe when you get out. And I'm sure you will handle him. That's all. Teresa, by the way, will be released in 217 days. <laughs> Clap if you went to your prom. I know you've been proming, mommy, many times. I, I did. Um, clap if you've never been to a prom in your life. Hey there, lonely girls. Hey there, lonely girls. Look how it all turned out. All right? Look. I've never been to a prom either, but the after parties were better than the prom anyway. But look, the times have changed and the prom dresses are getting skimpier and skimpier and they're causing a lot of controversy. Now, there are high schools all over the country banning girls from wearing prom dresses with, and I'm gonna give you the list because I've been looking. Side cutouts, bare midriffs, backlessness, and students are outraged everywhere, as you can well imagine. Um, but you can also imagine that the students are being encouraged to be outraged because parents have a different face. We love to, many of us, <laughs> cutouts, backlessness, too, tor too short, too tight. So a lot of us parents are encouraging our kids to be upset, but parents, we shouldn't be upset about this and neither should the kids. I agree with the schools, believe it or not. Don't come up here. 
in our school dressed like a common hua. <laughs> Face facts. Um, girls need to wear like a potato sack or any old thing to the prom. I'm gonna tell you why. Because a skimpy outfit is only this big. You put that in your parents' mailbox, along with your red lipstick and your thong. And after the prom, swing by the house, open the mailbox, pull your little outfit out, run up the street to Joe Green's gas station. Sorry. Change in the bathroom and hit the after party at the bonfire behind the Deal Casino on Ocean Avenue. That's all I'm saying. I mean, I mean, my thing is, we need to teach our kids to be more respectful of authority and also when appropriate attire is warranted. It's up to them to be sneaky behind our backs and hide skimpy stuff, like we, like we did. <laughs> You know, otherwise, these kids, they show up to prom un, un, inappropriate. They show up to the first day at their new job inappropriate. They take dress down Friday to be literally a tube top and poom poom shorts. You know, so anyway, uh, happy proming and good luck to you parents. Yeah. A mess. So. It's Memorial Day weekend. We call this the unofficial start of summer. Kids across the country are counting the days before school lets out and summer camp begins. Yeah! You know? As a little girl in Jersey, we would summer camp every single summer and I would love to go sleep away to get rid of two people. Oh! I'm playing, but just, just for a few weeks. Um, and thank you for that opportunity. And now I'm, I want the privilege to um, give back to underprivileged kids the same way. Um, me and my Kevins have set up the Hunter Foundation. And last summer we sent a fabulous group of girls to, um, to camp in New Jersey and they horseback rode and they stayed in tents and the arts and crafts, it was wonderful. And they were there for two weeks. Well, this summer is no different. We would love to send a group of deserving girls to summer camp. For more information on how you can get involved, go to wendyshow.com. Thank you. We've got more terrific show for you, everybody. Celebrity chef George Duran is here. And George is gonna show us how to grill up some delicious barbecue dishes. But up next, movie critic Ben Lyons is here, and he's gonna break down the summer's hottest movies. So grab a snack and come on down. which means the official summer movie season begins and here to break down the best movies on the big screen from our, um, from our, uh, mo <laughs> he's, he's our favorite movie critic. It's just Say me, hello. Wendy. It's just it's, me. Don't get nervous. Ben it's nice to see you. How are you? How are you doing? How are you doing? Happy birthday, Shirley. How are you doing? Oh, we're good? Happy birthday. Thank you I'm glad you, so you guys much. got Beyonce's, you know, living room set to come <laughs> Be okay. here today. That's nice. The summertime is the right time for movies. What do you have? Well, Tom Cruise is back for the fifth time as Ethan Hunt in Mission Impossible. Now, this will be the first time that audiences will see Tom Cruise post the Scientology documentary going clear. So it'll be interesting to see if it affects the box office at all. I don't think so. The Mission Impossible movies are huge. I forgot about the Scientology huge. thing. So. The last one, Ghost Protocol, was enormous. It's Tom Cruise hanging off a plane at 3,000 feet in the air. I mean, this yeah. guy's unbelievable. So yeah. that kicks off uh, July 31st for Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. But he's going to have some tough competition from other guys out there as well. Like? Including Channing Tatum, who is... <laughs> Mike, now I know you're not a fan of guys like this. But I'm a fan of those guys. But... Shirley is very excited yes. for Magic Mike, yes. too. Women... A lot of actors, you know, didn't want to be in the first one. And then guys like Anthony Mackie were like, let me get in the second one. Yes. He didn't get in it. Joe Montagalaga, laga, 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 he's in the movie. Yeah, um, yeah that movie's going to do huge, obviously. And then also Jake Gyllenhaal stars in Southpaw. I have a lot of high hopes for this one. 
a boxing movie that was originally conceived for Eminem, who was very close to doing the role. Last minute decided, ah, it's not for me. Jake signed on. He trained for four months. That's a real body two commitment. training, you know, uh, sessions a day, 50 Cent, uh, Rachel McAdams round out the cast. Not a true story, but it's going to be a good one. So that South opens uh, later in the summer. Okay. Um, let's find out uh, what else you got. Uh, in the world of music, Wendy, it's a big summer at the movies. Uh, straight out of Compton. Yay! NWA. They story. really got this movie ready quickly. You know, and I feel like it had been kind of talked about for a long time in Hollywood. Right. But once they said it's go time, they went for it. Um, um, Paul Giamatti plays Jerry Heller. There you see him there. Um, uh, Dr. Dre was on set every day for the movie, as was Ice Cube, directed by F. Gary Gray. And you'll love this. They pretty much cast unknowns for the guys, except for Ice Cube's it's, son yes. is playing his dad. Who so looks Shea just Jackson like him. Jr., uh, which is, I love which is really cool. And I like that the guys were on the set, so yes. we're going to get some authenticity And then there's the another movie. movie that takes place in South Central Los Angeles called Dope. I had a chance to see it this year at the Sundance Film Festival about a group of kids living today but who were obsessed with movies from, uh, from uh, music of that era. Uh -huh. So they love 80s hip-hop and 90s hip-hop okay. and they get caught in the middle of a drug deal gone bad. ASAP Rocky, Chanel Iman. It was the talk of Sundance. Pharrell Williams, an executive producer on it, has four new songs in the movie. Shamik Moore, who's the lead in this, is going to be a big star for years to come. So check out Dope when it okay. hits theaters June 19th. Now, that's the music What's going to be happening with the kids' movies? I don't think kids understand what minions are. <laughs> I don't think grown-ups do either, but it doesn't matter. Uh, minions is out this summer. It is the prequel to Despicable Me. It's sort of a minion or origin story. Uh, Sandra Bullock is, is the villain. Uh, Scarlet Overkill, who hires the minions to go on this crazy adventure. It's a lot of fun. And like a lot of good kids' movies, they're jokes that go over the heads of the kids. So we can all we laugh, can laugh as well. Uh -huh. So that opens. And then there's a film from Disney and Pixar called Inside Out. It just played at the Cannes Film Festival. And what's this about? It's a very ambitious story. It, takes on, it, it tells the story of a young girl and the voices inside her head, the, the inside voices that we all have and the feelings and emotions. We have joy, hmm. fear, sadness. Yes. Mindy Kaling, Amy Poehler, Bill Hader all voice the inside head, uh, voices of this young girl's heads. A lot for young kids to handle. Uh, but I think this is kind of the front runner for best animated feature at the Oscars already. Okay, now what about the comedies for the summer? Well, Ted 2 is going to crush. The first one is so I, funny. I saw the first one. Mark Wahlberg is back, of course, as is Seth MacFarlane. No Mila Kunis this time, Amanda Seyfried. But uh, Ted is getting married. And in order to do so, he has to prove in a court of law that he's a person. I'm in. I'm so, in. Tom Brady playing himself, a lot of great cameos as well. The first one did so much money. Yeah. I think this will be the big, you know, blockbuster comedy of the summer. I mean, the poster itself <laughs> is, just, is ridiculous. So what else on the comedy front? Um, uh, the, uh, something from Melissa McCarthy, uh, who's back with director Paul Fee. They did Bridesmaids together. They did The Heat. This time it's called Spy. She's a CIA analyst who's... Look at that. Uh, she's got a desk job, and they put her out in the field to go undercover with Jason Statham and Jude Law and Sounds Rose Byrne. Uh, and Melissa McCarthy <laughs> is, uh, is funny just riding a bike and falling over. Yes, so that's yes. going to be a big movie. And then another um, comedian, uh, Amy Schumer, who seems to be the we talk... We like her. Yeah, the talk in the comedy scene. She's starring in Trainwreck. It's from director Judd Apatow. She plays a woman who's working in New York, doesn't believe in love, doesn't believe in monogamy until she meets Bill Hader. On a train. a sports doctor who's LeBron's doctor, and LeBron is all over the movie. Oh. Um, so, yeah, as a big sports fan, obviously excited to see him. I'm sure the Knicks will get made fun of in that one as well. So, yeah, train wreck. Love it. In theaters this summer as well. Now... Uh, speaking of athletes, is it true that you now have a job with Derek Jeter? I do work with Derek Jeter, yeah. What, 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 are, you what are you doing? Um, well, we work at the Players Tribune, which is a new media company that Derek founded to provide athletes with a platform to tell their stories. So Steve Nash retired on our site. We give great behind-the-scenes footage for fans like myself who love sports. Yeah. And uh, no, Wendy, I'm not going to tell you any Derek Jeter stories. Well, I know where you're I going was, with I was this. Going to I know you were going with this. So, no. <laughs> it's always so nice to see you. Thank you so much, Wendy. You you can check out Ben's work on theplayerstribune.com. Up next, we're grilling some deliciousness. Keep it here. kicks off this weekend, so here with some delicious barbecue for our Memorial Day picnics is our celebrity chef friend, George Duran. Yeah. So nice 
to see you again. You always come and teach us about deliciousness. What are we making today? Well, we're going to be grilling big time. And first of all, protection from the sun. We got to blend it out with some nice sunglasses here with the flames. Okay. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. From, 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 the, from the popping grease and things like that. You are ridiculous, George. <laughs> Let's get started. So, do I see lamb chops? Absolutely. We're going to do lamb chops with a green sauce, a little stuffed volcanic potato, and a stuffed orange with a cinnamon roll inside of it. You're going to love what we're going to do. Lamb chops are the one of the easiest things to grill because you can just put it right on the grill, season it very simply, and just the best part is that it's like a lollipop. You can actually have these little handles that you can actually hold yes. and then dip it into the sauce. Let me ask you something, Wendy. Do you want to taste my guasacaca? <laughs> sure. I'm game. <laughs> No, 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 the guasacaca is actually a sauce from Venezuela. It's a green sauce made with peppers, avocados. You can put parsley in there, uh, onions, and you dip it right here in this green sauce. It is floral, herbal, delicious, and you just bathe it right in there and take a bite, and it is heavenly. Mmm. Nice. This is really good. This is going to change the way you grill forever. It's called guasacaca, the worst name on earth, but so delicious. And you can use it on a variety of meats. A variety of meats, potatoes, corn, you name it. You can just drink it out of the bowl if you want. It's very good. how beautiful it is. Isn't that fantastic? So you're grilling these dry, putting them and then the guasacacas on the side. The guasacacas on the side and you dip it and you just serve it with all the meats that you want. This next one, by the way. Please. You're gonna absolutely love it. It's very simple. I've taken the potato that I've already cooked a little bit. But most people do them on the side. This is so creative. This is incredible. You cut the bottom edge so you can stand it up. You remove the inside core of it with an apple core and then you mix the following together. A little bit of a cream cheese softened, a little bit of cheddar cheese in there. You put some of the, you like hot sauce, right? I do. Oh, I know you do. Here we go. A hot sauce. And then you want to just mix that together. Once you get that all mixed together, you put as much or as little hot sauce as you want. You have this kind of paste in there. And then you kind of take it in a baggie or you could do it with a spoon. And you fill wow. up these potatoes nice and gently like that. Nice and gooey. Ooh. Good idea. Isn't that crazy good? But wait a minute. The best part is that you take some bacon and you wrap some bacon around it. Jeez. How creative. Right? You put some toothpicks on it so it doesn't move. You throw it on the grill and it starts bubbling. You throw some cheese on it too, by the way, before you throw it on the grill. And when it all comes out, check this out right over here, this volcanic beauty. Look oh at my this. God. A little sour cream and a little more hot sauce to kind of end it with because you want that lava to flow a little bit. And the bacon is still wrapped. The bacon is still wrapped. But what Perfect. happens is that all that fat and the grease kind of cook also oh. the potatoes. It adds extra flavors. It's gooey, ooey, volcanic yumminess that's mm. right there on your grill. This is absolute heaven. <laughs> this is really good. Yeah. How creative. You ready for dessert? Sure. This is for Shirley. Your, <laughs> this is for your mom, actually. Good way to grill dessert. It's not just about, about putting fruits on the grill. You can go extra creative over here. And what I like to do is get an orange, hollow it out completely. Great idea. And in this, what you do is you get one of these biscuits that you find at the supermarket. The ones that you pop in fresh. Yeah, yeah, those. Exactly. You kind of get that. You kind of open it up. Use your fingers. Don't worry about it. Stuff it in there. Add some brown sugar in there, too. A little bit of cinnamon. We want to steam it up with a tiny bit of milk in there. And then what you do is you close the top off just like that. Wrap it in aluminum foil again. Hot. If you have a campsite, you throw it directly on the fire. Okay. Or well. you put it directly on the grill. And right here on your left side, I'm going to pull it out for a second here. Let's pull this out here. Nice and hot. It comes out already cooked. And what happens is that that orange fuses, infuses inside of the That's cinnamon roll in there. A little warm here. Look at this baby. Look at this baby. You remove this. It's, oh, my God. Yeah. Now, it's not not a swirl like you normally are used to seeing, but it's all kind of goodness in here. Absolutely. What you do is you mm. pretty much all that brown sugar it. and the little biscuit and the cinnamon. Yeah. You're pretty much making an orange infused cinnamon roll right there on the campfire or on mm. your grill and dessert is served. Come on. For more information on all these recipes, go to wendyshow.com. George, another hit. My pleasure. Thank you. Happy Memorial Day. Sweet talk. In Atlanta is next. Don't miss it. We've partnered with Aaron's to give away rooms in the Winter Room in June contest. Need a new living room with an RCA 65-inch smart TV and other electronics? Or a new laundry room with a state-of-the-art Samsung?
Song washer and dryer? Go to wendyshow.com and tell us why you should win a room in June, and you might end up owning it. I ate my way through the commercial break. Wendy watchers are opinionated all over the country, so we've taken our street talk nationwide. Thanks to our friends at Metro PCS, where you can get the best deal, unlimited data, talk, and text for just $30 a month. Let's check out what Atlanta has to say about our favorite celebrities. Roll it! If you got into a fight, which celebrity would you want on your side? Celebrity that I would want on my side in the fight would have to be Nicki Minaj. Because you know she can hold her own, and when we get done, she can give me a Nicki massage. The celebrity that I would like to have on my side if I got into a fight would have to be Betty White. She may look like a sweet little grandma, but that golden girl has got some golden gloves. would you invite to your Memorial Day barbecue? The celebrity I would invite to my Memorial Day barbecue would be Tyree. He is so hot and ripped, I would grill up some burgers on those sizzling washboard abs. The celebrity that I want to bring to my Memorial Day barbecue would have to be Jamie Foxx. Because when I want everybody to leave, I just ask him to sing the national anthem. Jenner to my Memorial Day barbecue because she's not getting a burger past those big fake lips of hers. If you were making a band, which three celebrities would you pick? Three celebrities I would choose to be in my band would be The Rock, Vin Diesel, and Channing Tatum. Shirts off, oil up. Making the band, the three celebrities I would want would be Kanye West, Kanye West, and Kanye West. Because if Kanye West had a band, he wouldn't want anybody else to be in. Mine. Mine. If I were making a band, the three celebrities that I would pick for all of Kim Kardashian's exes: Ray J, Reggie Bush, and Chris Humphreys. After surviving the Kardashians, you know those guys feel like singing and dancing. Don't forget, with Metro PCS, you'll be on the fast nationwide T-Mobile network. Spring to Ching is next. Don't go far. Do you want to be my next co-host? Okay, good. Go to wendyshow.com, request your free tickets, and be a part of my studio audience. Make sure you're dressed to impress. I can't wait to see you. Cha-ching! Uh, let's get today's uh, caller on the line. Hello? I mean, wait. Whoops. <laughs> Hello? Rosalinda Mendoza from San Leandro, California. How you doing? Oh, my gosh. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Sam. Hi, Rosalinda. How you doing? Good. Okay, Rosalinda, before we read your question, we're going to find out how much you're playing for in today's Spring to ching okay? <gasps> All right. Okay. Suzanne, to you know what to do, Suzanne. Dump it and spin it. I know what to do. Big <laughs> Playing 
going for $1,000. Listen closely okay. because you only have 15 seconds awesome. to answer the following question, okay? And okay. remember, right. your first answer is your only answer. All right. Yesterday in Hot Topics, we talked about a famous pop star who's rumored to have gotten work done on her nose and chin. Name that pop star and go! Iggy Azalea. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Don't go far. Okay, so Rola is from Brooklyn, and we're going to play Celebrity Said What? Which celebrity said this? Don't help her. Okay. I always bring my dates to my mother's house for the first date. I think that's, that's a Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh. Congratulations. Oh, my boy. Yes, Rola. He is a mama's boy. And you one dinner for two oh, at Artis you. Artisanal Bistro here in New York. Thank Congratulations. You. So before we before we go, we have something special for my mom. Mommy, ready? Bring it out. Happy <laughs> to the Palm restaurant. We know the Palm with delicious steak and the cream spinach. <laughs> Happy 80th birthday, Mommy. Um, I want to thank today's guest and my co-host, my studio audience. Also, thank you to the nice people at Bee Cake New York for the beautiful birthday cake. I love you for watching today, and I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye-bye.